This is a short tutorial with one last observation about the way the Fresnel reflections play into when you're trying to calculate the power reflected at an interface, because there are some subtleties there. So if we consider, as always, an interface and a wave vector characterizing the approach of a collimated beam, and this time we specifically think about it being some sort of pencil beam of light with some width that I'm characterizing like that. And the light is coming in at our typical angle theta, like that, theta, theta 1. And now we think about how that beam behaves at the interface. There's, as we know, a reflected beam. So that's K, that's K prime. And then we've got a refracted beam characterized by Q. And we notice what the pencil envelope does here. Of course, the size of that pencil stays the same in the reflected medium. But in the refracted medium, where the propagation is at some here gentler angle theta 2, that would be in the case where n2 is greater than n1. Uh, the pencil beam has gotten fatter. And we have asserted in class that the power conservation law is that the pointing vector for the incident light has to be multiplied by this obliquity factor cosine theta 1 to when, it, when we talk about how much power it delivers to a certain area on the interface. And that's going to be equal to the amount of power coming off of that same area due to the reflected beam, which has the same makes the same angle theta 1 with the interface, plus the transmitted beam. Now it makes an angle theta 2 with the interface. So this becomes the power balancing equation. And if we divide each term by the first term here, as we sort of have done similar things with the Fresnel reflection and transmission coefficient equations, we get a 1. And we define this. This term, when divided, gives we call it capital R. And this term, when divided, gives us capital T. But let's unpack that. The reflection, the capital R reflection coefficient, if we ratio this term to this term, notice that the cosine theta 1's cancel out. And we just get S reflected over S incident. Now the formula for the pointing vector, as we have seen, I'm not writing brackets around these guys now. We're already sort of assuming that we're talking about the pointing vector in that conventional way. S reflected is going to be 1 half epsilon naught C naught. And then we're in refractive index N1 medium. We're assuming that N1 is totally real, so we don't have an exponential decay factor to write here. That's going to be negligible. And then the strength of the electric field, that's ER squared. We'll assume for the moment it's linearly polarized, so we don't have to write ER dot ER complex conjugate. It's just a linear polarization, and we can write it this way. All of the terms in the denominator for S incident are of the same form. And crucially, the refractive indices are the same, just as the angles were the same. And the only thing that's different is that we have E incident squared as the strength of the electric field. So the ratio of these two things, most of the terms cancel out. The 1 halves are gone, epsilon naughts are gone, C naughts, and even the N1s are gone. We just have the ratio of the fields. And that's, in fact, equal to r squared, little r squared. And this would be true for s polarized light or p polarized light. If you did either case, you would get r squared with the corresponding subscript on it. And so calculating the reflected fraction of the incident power is very easy. You just get the reflection coefficient for the field, and you square it. And if we start co talking about complex numbers, again, it would be the magnitude squared. But in these simple cases where there really is reflection and all the refractive indices are real, we can simply say that R, capital R is lowercase r quantity squared. And 
I'm going to put this emoticon here to say that's pretty easy. As opposed to, if I want to calculate the transmission power percentage, for, okay, so that's, now I've got this term ratioed to this term. The, the angles don't cancel, so I have st cos theta 1, theta 2, over s incident cos theta 1. And when I do the ratioing, the n1, n1 cancellation won't happen because I'll have an n2 in the numerator. So I now get n2 over n1 times ratio of the cosines times, finally, the t field reflection coefficient squared. And that gets a frowny face because calculating t squared, I don't immediately have the transmitted power fraction, I have to multiply by these other four terms as well. So when you're actually making practical calculations of the transmitted power fraction, I would encourage you to go back to this equation and just notice that T equals 1 minus R, of course, because power is conserved. So the, the right thing to do is to just calculate the reflection, the reflected power fraction, which is very easy, and then just take t equals 1 minus that, so you get the transmitted power fraction, and that, it puts you back in this position.